Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at example problems for the DTFT, all right, let us continue our discussion. Now, let us look at a continuous time system with the Laplace transform. So, remember we are looking focusing on this sampling problem number 16, consider the continuous time system uh, with uh, the Laplace transform H s equals 1 over s plus 2 into s plus 3. Now, if this is sampled at T s, correct, if we sample this impulse response sampled with duration equals T s, then we want to find what is the corresponding what is the corresponding the discrete time transfer function the DTFT DTFT of the resulting system correct. Okay. So, basically what we have here is you can see we have h of s equals 1 over s plus 2 into s plus 3 and we want to sample this correct with sampling duration T s that is we want to take samples at intervals of multiples of T s that is 0 T s twice T s minus T s minus twice T s and so on all right that is the sampling process all right we know that ok. And therefore, now if you if you express this in partial fractions, so I will have 1 over s plus 2 minus 1 over s plus 3 ok. And considering a causal system ok, we have the corresponding inverse Laplace transform e raise to minus twice t u t minus e raise to minus 3 t u t that is this is a causal system there is a right handed signal corresponding to this Laplace transform which is e raise to minus 2 t minus e raise to minus 3 t times u t. Okay. And that is basically your h t this is the impulse response. Okay. Which implies if you sample this at T s that is you sample it at n times T s that is your nth sample of the discrete time impulse response that is the DT discrete time impulse response that will be equal to e raise to minus twice n T s minus e raise to minus 3 n T s u of n T s which is basically u of n. Okay. So, this is basically e raise to minus twice n T s u of n minus e raise to minus 3 n T s u of n. So, you can write this as e raise to minus twice T s. So, a raise to n 
q n or a 1 raised to n u n minus e raised to minus 3 times T s raised to a 2 raised to n a 2 raised to the power of n u n. Okay. And therefore, all right, so we have sampled the impulse response of the continuous time system and derived the corresponding discrete time impulse response. Now, we can derive the DTFT of the system. So, now substituting, so now H d z taking the z transform what we have is we have a n u n for this causal system the z transform is 1 over 1 minus e raise to minus twice n t s minus or 1 over 1 minus a that is e raise to minus twice T s z inverse plus 1 over or minus 1 over 1 minus e raise to minus 3 T s z inverse. Now, substitute z equal to to derive the d t f t substitute z equals e raise to j omega and that gives us h d of omega e raise to minus j omega minus 1 over 1 minus e raise to minus e raise to minus 3 T s e raise to minus j omega. Okay, so this is your d t f t. This is the d t f t of the. This is the d t f t of the transfer function. Correct. This is the d t of the as a frequency response of the corresponding. Okay, so this is the frequency response of the corresponding discrete time system. frequency response of the corresponding discrete time system. Okay, all right. So, that basically completes this problem where we are sampling it at uh, sampling duration T s or sampling frequency 1 over T s and we are finding the corresponding D T F T or the uh, frequency response of the discrete time system. Okay. Let us look at the next problem. For this, we will continue uh, consider again the L T I system consider an LTI system with infinite impulse response H n. Okay, so, this is an infinite impulse response. which means h n is non zero from minus infinity to infinity it is infinite. Okay. So, it is non zero over an infinite duration. Okay. Now, what we want to do here, so this is basically your infinite impulse response, okay. this is your IIR. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to find an approximation find finite impulse FIR approximation. find an FIR approximation such that find an FIR approximation such that H tilde n. So, this is a finite impulse response filter H tilde n 
no equals 0 for n less than 0 or n greater than n minus 1 non zero only for 0 less than or equal to n less than or equal to. So, what we want to find is we want to find the best FIR approximation such that the following quantity that is if you look at this quantity minus over minus pi to pi because the DTFT is periodic, we want this quantity that is h of omega minus h tilde of omega that is we want to minimize the error between the DTFT of the original filter. In fact, this is the square error correct, this is the cumulative squared error between the DTFT of the original DTFT h omega of the original filter h n and the DTFT h tilde omega of the new filter h tilde n. Okay. So, we want to find the best FIR approximation. So, what this gives us is the best FIR approximation to the given IR that is the idea of this problem. Okay. So, that is best FIR approximation. this is the best FIR approximation to the given IIR filter. Okay. Now, firstly to solve this first observe that we have H n which has the DTFT or frequency response H of omega and H tilde n has the DTFT h tilde of omega this implies h of n minus h tilde n has the DTFT h of omega minus h tilde of omega and therefore, now this follows from linearity remember. Okay. Okay. that is h of n that is h of n minus h tilde n that is the DTFT h of omega minus h tilde of omega. Now, therefore, if you look at this quantity minus 1 over 2 pi magnitude h of omega minus h tilde omega square from the Parseval's theorem. Parseval's theorem this is equal to summation n equals minus infinity to infinity magnitude h n minus magnitude h tilde n square. Now, you can split this into three components one from n equals minus infinity to minus 1. Now, n equal to minus infinity to minus 1 h tilde n is 0. So, h n minus h tilde n is only h n. So, this reduces to magnitude h of n square plus now summation let us look at summation n equal to capital N to infinity again in this range h tilde n is 0. So, this reduces to simply now this is because in this range h of n or h tilde n is equal to 0. Therefore, the only remaining component is summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 h n minus h tilde n square. Now, remember these two quantities are therefore, a constant these do not depend on h tilde. and therefore, this equal to constant c and this now to minimize this therefore, to minimize to minimize error we 
one needs to minimize this quantity minimize this to minimize the original and this is minimum because look at this is the square of a quantity magnitude square is always greater than or equal to 0 the minimum value is 0 and that occurs when h tilde n equals h r minimum of this occurs is always greater than or equal to 0. the minimum occurs when h of n equals h tilde n for 0 less than or equal to n less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay. So, the best FIR approximation capital N tap FIR approximation is h tilde n equal to 0 n less than 0 or n greater than n minus 1 and equal to h of n for 0 less than equal to n less than equal to n. Okay. This minimizes the error this minimizes the error in the frequency response, this minimizes the squared error minimizes the squared error of the frequency response. Alright, this gives the best FIR approximation to h of n which is the given best FIR approximation to the given IR that is the given infinite impulse response filter h of n. Okay, so, this gives the best FIR approximation to the given infinite impulse response filter h of all right so let us continue to the next problem we have now we are going to start problems on the dft remember this is for a finite length sequence this is for the discrete Fourier transform and uh, what we want is we have given two sequences x n equals sin pi by 2 n ok and uh, this is for 0 less than equal to n less than or equal to 3 and uh, h n the impulse response is basically 2 raised to n zero less than equal to n less than equal to 3. Now what we want to do, is we want to find now clearly you can see here for this finite length sequences n is equal to 4 so we have 0 less than equal to n less than equal to n minus 1 okay n minus 1 so capital n that is length of these sequences is 4 now what we want to do is we want to find y n which is the circular convolution of x n with h n. Okay. So, you want to find 
circular convolution of x n with h n. Okay. Remember for finite length sequences one can define a circular convolution which is nothing but a wrap around convolution okay. and that is defined as the following with the following expression that is you have y of n equals summation i equals 1 2 or i equals 0 to n minus 1 x of i h of n minus i. Now, this is your normal convolution. In circular convolution, this n minus i will be modulo capital N. Okay. So, this is n minus i modulo n in which case in this case this is modulo 4. That is so, you are basically wrapping the sequence around and you are performing the circular convolution. wrapping the sequence around and basically. So, this for performs convolution by wrapping the sequence around. Okay. So, let us take a look at this what we are given is we are given this sequence x n let me just draw it in a different page probably that will help. So, we are given a sequence. Uh, so, this is 0 and uh, we have well x of n is sin n pi by 2 n. So, sin uh, x of 0 is 0 this is 0 x of 1 is sin pi by 2 which will be 1. So, this is 0, this is 1, x of 2 is sin pi by 2 into 2 which is sin pi which is again 0. Uh, I am talking, I am sorry, I am talking about h of, uh, I am talking about x of n, yeah. And x of 3 is sin pi by 2 into 3 is that is sin uh, 3 pi by 2 that is minus 1. So, this is x of n. Okay, which is equal to sin pi by 2 into n. And h of n, remember, now let us plot h of n and this will be a little, this is an interesting thing. So, what will happen here is h of n, h of 0 is 1. So, I am just not going to draw the stems here, but I am just going to mark the values. This is h of n, h of 0 is 1, h of 1 is 2 to the power of 1 is 2, h of 3 is 2 to the power of 3, uh, h of 2 is 2 to the power of 2 which is 4 and uh, h of uh, for this thing h of 3 is 2 to the power of 3 which is 8. Okay. Now, when we draw, so this is h of n. Now, at n equal to 0, remember I have to consider h of n minus i for each x of i, I have to consider. So, this is corresponding to i equal to 0. So, this is h of n minus i, correct, or this is uh, remember a term correspond time n equal to 0. I am sorry, this is n equal to 0. Let us make this as i index as i because the summation is with respect to the index i. So, this is x of i sin pi by 2 i. Okay. So, this is basically your index i. So, this is h of i. Now, n equal to 0, I have to consider n minus i so it will be h of minus i. And h of minus i, remember this will be modulo 4. So, h of 0, h of minus 0 is 0, this will be 1 h of minus 1, h of 0 that will be h of minus 1, but minus 1 modulo 4 is 3. So, this will be h of 3 which will be 2 to the power of 3 that is 8. So, this will be 8, h of minus 2 will be h of 2 which is 4 and h of minus 3 modulo 4 will be h of 1 which is 2. So, this is your h of minus i, this is corresponding to h. So, now here I have x of i 
corresponding to n equal to 0 I have x of i into now h of minus i modulo f4. So, that will be now you can see 0 into 1 plus 1 into 8 if you multiply the corresponding terms plus 4 into 0. So, that will be and that will be if you look at this. So, h of so, so we have uh, resulting y of 0 equals summation i equals 0 to 3 x of i into h of n minus i which is h of minus i modulo 4 which will be x of 0 into h of 0 plus x of 1 into h of minus 1, but h of minus 1 modulo 4 is nothing but h of 3 plus x of 2 into h of minus 2 which is modulo 4 which is 2. x of 3 into h of minus 3 which is h of 1 ok. And that will be now if you look at this that will be 1 into 8 minus 1 into 2 ok. So, now let me just write it a little bit more clearly x of x of 0 is 0. So, 0 into h of 0 which will be 1 plus x of 1 is 1 into h of 3 which will be 8 plus x of 2 which is 0 times h of 2 which is 4 plus x of 3 which is minus 1 into h of 1 which is 2. So, that is 1 into 8 minus 1 into 2 which is equal to 6 ok and that is what you get from the figure also that is 1 into 0 plus 8 into 1 plus 4 into 0 minus 2 into uh, plus 2 into minus 1. Okay. Now, similarly, now what happens in the next time instant? Look at the next time instant. Next time instant n equal to 1, you will have h of 1 minus i. So, h of 1 minus 0 that will be h of 1. So, h of 1 minus 0 that will be h of 1 that is 2, h of 1 minus 1 that is 0 that will be 1, h of 1 minus 2. 2 uh, that will be h of 1 minus 2 that will be h of minus 1 modulo 4 is h of 3. So, that will be 8 and h of 1 minus 3 h of minus 2 modulo 4 is 2. So, that will be 4. So, now what you can see here at n equal to 1. So, this 2 is moving to the left and the rest all are rotating to the right. So, this is basically what is happening is in the next time instant the 2 if you can take a look at this something very interesting that is happening here. So, that 2 is basically rotating to the left and the rest all are moving one step to the right and therefore, what you have now is basically this is a circular convolution as you can see at each time instant the sequence is basically wrapping around itself. So, the rightmost quantity is moving to the left and all the others are shifting one place to the right. So, it is basically with each time step it is wrapping around. So, this is a circular convolution. Okay. So, y of 1 will therefore be x of 0 into h of 1 plus x of 1 into h of uh, x of i x of 1 into h of 1 minus 1 that is h of 0 plus x of 2 into h of 1 minus 2 h of minus 1 modulo 4 is h of 3 plus x of 3 into h of 2. Okay. And you can simplify this that will be 1 into 1 minus 4 into 1 
which is equal to minus 3. Okay. And that you can see from the figure also, you can see that this will be 2 into 0 plus 1 into 1 that is 1 plus 8 into 0 minus 4 into 1. So, that is 1 minus 4 that is minus 3. Okay. And the next time instant again n equal to 2, you have h of 2 minus i. So, therefore, 4 will move to the right. So, you will have 2, 1, 8 and the next time instant you have n equal to 3. So, you will have h of 3 minus i and what you will have here is the 8 will move to the left and each will move one step to the right 8, 4, 2, 1. Okay. And you can calculate again the circular convolution what you will have is y of 2 equals 2 into 1 plus 8 into minus 1 that is 2 minus 8 equals minus 6 and y of 3 equals 4 into 1 plus 1 into minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 equals 3. So, y of so the y sequence this will be uh, 6 minus 3 minus 6 comma 3 for 0 and defined obviously for 0 less than or equal to n less than or equal to 3. This is the output of the circular convolution. So, this is the output of the circular convolution of the given sequence and now realize that we have used a time domain interpretation for the circular convolution. In the subsequent uh, module what we are going to do is we are going to carry it out in the frequency domain by using the DFT of these finite length sequences. We can use the DFT and remember in the DFT domain the circular convolution becomes a multiplication of the corresponding DFT. So, we will use that principle to evaluate the output of the corresponding circular convolution using the DFT in the frequency domain. All right. So, we will stop here and continue in the subsequent module. Thank you very much.